Mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. All right. <clears throat> All right, brothers and sisters out there, excuse me. So we're going to go into another lesson. Shalom to all of you out there. Shabbat Shalom as it is the new moon. And I want to say all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the holy elect. All right. This lesson is going to be entitled Prophetic Warnings Are Not Open for Debate. Repent or Die. And Shalom to the brother Yeshaya, men of Valor, South Carolina. All right. <clears throat> and Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Barak, thumb to all the brothers and sisters out there across the world. All right. Gathering faith for a treasure in these last days. <clears throat> I'm going to do my best voice is not so good this evening but anyway let's get into this lesson so again this is probably the third time in two weeks some idiot jake or you know what i'll stop short of saying that i'll say some misguided israelite is basically challenging me to a debate you people out there stop sending us requests for debate stop asking us to come on your shows stop asking us to come and talk dialogue all that shit is a debate. We don't have anything to say. What we're telling you is what the Lord told us to say. Right? These prophetic warnings are not open for debate. Niggas always want to talk and debate and go back and forth and play the dozens and have a dick measuring contest and try to prove this and show you this right over here. The Lord didn't send us to do that. He sent us with a message to give to the Israelites. And there's only two choices. You repent or you die. Just because you know you're an Israelite don't mean you repent it. Just because a brother know he's an Israelite. He know he from, you know, he think he's from the tribe of Judah or whatever. Doesn't mean that he's born again. Doesn't mean he understands the ramifications of what's about to happen on the earth. Our job is to deliver the message. In the true sense, the prophets were sent to give you the warning. While you want to have a dialogue or a talk or back and forth. Really, in the truest sense, the prophets are here to have a monologue. That means one person is talking, which that person is the most high. Sent by men to give you the warning, to tell you what's going on. We didn't come to, you know, go back and forth with you niggas. Okay? We came to give you a warning. Now, while we do this, the ministry of the prophets, so while we do go into other topics, and we will answer questions, and we will try to help you in certain things, our main goal is to give you the warning and to prepare you for the coming of the Lord. When you go outside of that and you say you don't believe what we're saying or you want to go, well, I need more proof and I need more time. Look, that ain't of us to give you more time. You got until the grace period is up. Then where's all that debate going to be? Then where's all that shit talking going to be? And like the brother put up, it's a bunch of fucking pride. The pride on Jake is outstanding. It's astounding. And the Lord is going to see to it that you be destroyed if you don't repent. This is uh, Men of Valor, South Carolina, Yeshia, Proverbs 13 and 10. Only by pride. You got to be a proud ass nigga to go try to go back and forth with the prophets that the Lord sent unto you. Because <clears throat> really we're speaking with the voice of the Lord. You ain't going to go back and forth with the Almighty, would you? But you look at us as just men. So there you go. There's the problem. Which means if you look at us as just men, that means you're an unbeliever. That's what it means. And we can see that. You don't know enough in the scriptures to know that when you go back and forth with the prophets, you're showing unbelief. That's what you're doing. You don't even know the scriptures well enough to know that. You think you're just having a talk with a man. I'm trying to get this nigga to prove it. You're doing that for clout. You're chasing clout. And at the end of it all, a lot of you people out there want the Hebrews like to come on your program because your, your platform is struggling. And nobody wants to hear nothing that you got to say. You're not interesting. You're boring. You're charismatic bores. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say because you ain't saying shit that we haven't heard. People want to hear about what's coming forth from the Lord. 
you think it's an opportunity for you to try to one up us. Meanwhile, you're tossing away your grace period with dumb shit. You know, nigga want to talk about cornbread or macaroni and cheese. You'd be better off doing that shit. Proverbs 13 and 10. Only by pride cometh contention. But with the well-advised is wisdom. There you go. With the well-advised is wisdom. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick here. Let's, let's read this one from this brother, too. Jim is in his likeness. Jeremiah 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy. When you prophesy, it doesn't need a back and forth. Nobody need to tell you they don't like the clothes you got on or you from the country and I'm from the city. Y'all slow in the country. We from New York. It doesn't require that. You listen to what the Lord is saying or not. If you don't want to listen, don't listen. The prophets that have been before me prophesied. Salakia, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. We're here to give you the warnings about war, evil, and pestilence. Meanwhile, you telling us about you don't believe this, that 12 tribes sign, brother. I don't know. How did these natives and the Latinos, they ain't our people. They We black, you dummies. You are fucking up your grace period. You're giving it up to argue about minuscule things that really have no, no bearing. Look at this guy's comment. I want to read it. I'm just going to go right into it. This is from Kenan Clayton Jr. Now, I did two videos responding to Vocab Malone's two articles that he put up, two blogs, trying to trying to topple down the 12 tribes sign, right? So, of course, all the different creepy crawlers from around the world, from all around all the ghettos and the hoods in America are going to crawl out of the sewers and try to voice their displeasure or their lack of understanding or their lack of, uh, of belief of the 12 tribe sign here's one now the video is entitled response the majority of hebrew israelites don't believe the 12 tribe sign kenan clayton jr i want you to look at him good <laughs> look at his avatar picture he got that taliban looking scarf around his head no beard no beard and yeah his page is empty it's blank is as naked as a baby when it's born kenan clayton jr Come chop it up with the woolly bullies reloaded tonight, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and share why you believe we as a nation should subscribe to the 12 Tribe Charts. Now, I did two videos already. One was two hours and 37 minutes long. The other one was almost two hours long. And we got all these videos dealing with the, the, are the Israelites, all black people, or they this, or they that. We got all these videos. Why do I need to come on your show to tell you about it more? You haven't listened to all the videos we put up already. You need to think I want to talk to you niggas more now. Any of us, and I say me, but I'm talking about all the brothers. You think now we want to come on the program and tell you all the shit that we already told you already and you didn't believe it. Now we got to talk about it further. No, man. And what the hell is a woolly bully? What is that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> come chop it up with the woolly bullies. And this is, he left this earlier today. It says two hours, but that's when I screenshotted it from work today. Come chop it up with the woolly bullies reloaded tonight. Nine Eastern, eight Central. Now, this guy don't have no videos on his page. I don't know who he is. Never heard of him. Was this platform even worth even going on? I mean, not that I would, but what kind of platform do you think this guy has? He's trying to make a name for himself. Well, now you're going to be infamous because... Come chop it up with the Willy Bullet tonight. Reload it tonight, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and share why you believe we as a nation should subscribe to the 12 Tribes Charts. We already told you, and you didn't listen. What's this person saying? Let me see here, brother. Hold on. Yeah, you niggas are stupid. A fucking debate. The Lord, look, you notice the title. What is the title? That's right, brother. The truth is undebatable. There's nothing to talk about. Why do we want to talk to you niggas? The most high sin is here for that. Why don't you debate? Why don't you go take a long walk off a short pier, my nigga? <clears throat> We're not here for that. Let me read a quick scripture before I even um go further than that. Let me read it quick because because there's more. Now he said now he's gonna come back and say he ain't talking about no debate, but yes he is. <laughs> he's talking about a debate. That's all niggas want to do. The Lord sent us to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel, and you got the choice. You could either say you believe it. You can either repent and believe or not. That's the only, only choices that you have. 
I don't want to talk to you. We, we don't want to talk to you people. Go back and forth with a nigga. Just so, and then you could go on the program. Let's say a brother was going on the program and debate these people. You know what they're going to do? You're going to give them all the proof we've been giving them. And they go, uh-uh. And they go try to read you something from some crazy book that he think he know about. Something that he can't even prove. And then that's going to be that. And we just going to both go our separate ways. And then you're going to believe. You know, wasted time. No, we're not going to do that. It's a waste of time, like we said. Let's get Matthew real quick. This is Matthew 11 and verse 16. I'll start at 15. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is likened to children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. You see that? We brought the scriptures out and you didn't listen. The tune we played, you couldn't dance to it. It was too high of a frequency for you to, to get it. So now what do you want from us? For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he had the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. This is who is for the children of wisdom. It ain't for all the black men, all the Asiatic black men, all the <laughs> all the hood boogers, the pookas and the ray rays. It ain't for you. We're very we're looking for very a very strict regimen of the Lord. Let me rephrase it. The Lord sends with a very strict regimen. He said, Go and preach my word unto them. Whether they hear or forbear, there's of no consequence to you. I just need you to, I want you to go and do what I'm telling you to do. And we have to do that. So before you, you crazy niggas get on the comment board and start talking about you scared to debate. Why do we need to debate you? For what? What did you accomplish? What did black ever accomplish? What do you know? You haven't done shit. All these many hundred years we've been over here. You didn't do shit. You ain't came up with shit. The only thing you really could do was rap and you fucking that up, killing each other. Now you want us to talk to you. We ain't got nothing to say to you. The Lord is speaking through his word. And that's it. If you can't get it, this is your last chance, by the way. If you can't get it, the Lord is going to kill you, man. And we're trying to give you the warning so that our hands can be cleansed of your blood. All that shit you can say about us and what you know. Prove it. Prove it to us that you got knowledge. Go into the highways and preach the gospel that you know then. Let us see the great awakeness that's going to spawn from the from the from your preaching. Let's see it. Because we're doing ours. That's what the proof is. Anyway. I'm going to keep it moving. A lot more to cover. I got another scripture here first before we go. Before we go back to the comments. I want to read. Just hold on, brothers. Um, I know I got Isaiah up here. Just hold on here. I don't have it. <clears throat> but I'll bring it up. I'll read you this one. And a very specific thing the Lord told his men to do. The prophets are not here to debate with folks. We're telling you about the nuclear destruction on the way. Jake keep wanting to talk about this 12 tribe thing. If you don't want to believe it, that's okay. Just say you ain't no Israelite then and leave us alone. Go on and be black. Go watch black consciousness videos. Go talk to Sarnetta. Yeah, right. You talking about we scared to debate. No, you scared to go to the highways and preach. You got the Holy Spirit on you. Says the Lord dealing with you on such a high level. Where's your ministry at? That would be impressive if you do if you do that. Isaiah 62, verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Let's see if the Lord said, I set watchmen upon your walls to go back and forth in a debate. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Didn't the Lord say, Keep not silence? Yeah. But with your with his gospel and give him no rest till he established until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's what we're supposed to do. This is what the Lord is telling us to do. Preach his word. See that? That's what he wants us to do. That's what he's going to make us do. That's what his spirit is going to get on us to do. OK. <laughs> what do you got? More scoffers. I don't even see that one. What did that one say? Oh, there he is. Chad. Chad Warden, see, <laughs> low level man. That insult, you need to take that back. Hey, the idiot store called and said, Come home, Chad Warden. Is that a legend of Zelda outfit? 
<laughs> you trying to talk shit, look like you're getting ready for a transition, player. And I mean the transition, you know, that funny style. That's right. The brother said you got a face not even a mother would love. So let's keep it moving. So we read that in Isaiah. That's what the Lord wants us, told us to do. All right. So let's go back to the comment. I answered the guy back. And at first, you know, he tried to seem like he was trying to be nice. But see, Jake want to do that. Jake will be nice to you to try to get you to do what they want you to do. And then when you don't, then the horns come out. The real devil comes out of them, which I already knew it anyway. But I was just, you know, trying to keep shit diplomatic. So he asked me to, you know, come on the program. And I said, hell no. Debates are pointless. Either repent or die. Notice what I said. I said debates are pointless. Either repent or die. What are we talking about? Repent. As far as the gospel, okay, you know that you're an Israelite, right? But we know that you're not born again. We can tell, okay? We just can tell through the spirit that you're not born again. Because if you were, the Lord would be dealing with you on a higher level. And you would be trying to find out what you need to do to get yourself prepared to go teach or to go deeper into the scriptures. But instead, you're inquiring about a debate. So we know you're not born again. Because a man that's, that knows he's born again and been doing the work, he know that the most I ain't doing no fucking debates. The same way the gospel has been being preached over the years, the same way we all got it. We didn't come into the truth over no debate, over no rap music or nothing. We heard the word being preached and it stirred our spirits. That's what happened. And it's been going that way ever since, ever since, since the beginning. <clears throat> so he comes back. He says, is it a debate, but a dialogue in the scriptures, a two way conversation? That's what a dialogue is, right? A two-way conversation involving the scriptures, going back and forth over the stuff that we already been over and you didn't even receive it. So he's lying. Isn't a debate but a dialogue in the scriptures. To say someone will die due to not believing Hispanic and natives are the same people as Negroes. When did I say that? I never said that. I said repent or die. He's adding to what I said, trying to make it, changing the argument, which niggas often do when they're trying to bait you into doing some shit. And then when they're trying to, you know, trying to one up you. <clears throat> now i never said that if you don't believe the hispanics and natives or israelites you're gonna die i didn't say that i said repent and die it's right here hell no debates are pointless either repent or die see so i know now he's trying to trying to debate that's what he wants to do he says a case like that is something to show your brothers and sisters who don't subscribe to that to that how the most high says this is a red flag he don't want to say the name he says most high but we'll find out later what he says. <clears throat> the Most High says they'll die for not accepting them as our people. Again, I never said that. But in the grand scheme of things, if you don't accept the message that the prophets bring, yeah, you're going to die. And that's part of the message. But I didn't say it like that. He says, that's what you strongly believe. Stand on it. The invite stands <clears throat> as our people always welcome to come dialogue. If you decided to come also, he says, uh, if you decide to come also, be prepared to show <clears throat> how their ancient customs and cultures line up with the laws, statutes, and commandments more than those on the continent. Who has the proof showing their tribes like Ephraim, Dan, Gad, and many others look forward to see you there. Now, does that not sound like a debate to you? It's a debate. It's a challenge. It's an open, you know, you we really like to have you, brother. Come on. We, we already heard it before, man. And we already been bringing out all this proof, all these many years. Where you been? All them videos and lessons we've done, the apostles done. They went into a, a live stream going to all, each one of the 12 tribes and the customs and the different things about them. They did specials on it. <clears throat> now you want us to stop after way near the end of the world and go all the way back with you. Even though I just did two videos over almost like four hours in videos going into all these different uh, objections to the 12 tribes chart. Now you want me to go do it all over again with you, <laughs> with you and Pookie and Ray Ray and Fred. Them. No, we're not doing it. I answered the guy back. So you see where he's coming from. He didn't lie on me twice. I said, there's nothing to talk about. Ezekiel 317, son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. That's what the Lord told us to do. He told Ezekiel that. Right. And then he's telling us to do the same thing. OK, same exact thing. The prophets, the brother put the scripture of Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that came before us, 
they prophesied of, of, of all those different things against many countries of war, evil, and pestilence. Here it is, the mark of the beast about to be implemented, and you stuck on natives and Latinos are not our people, and they are our people. Not every single one of them, but see, that's the whole thing. It's the way Jake takes in information. We've explained it a thousand times, and you missed it all a thousand. You think now if I do it a thousand and one time, you're going to get it? I don't think so. <clears throat> so this is what the Lord said do. In verse 18, he says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So we have work to do. We have to make sure that Jake hears the word of, of truth coming out. And if they don't hear it, yeah, they're going to be destroyed. Or if we don't warn them, they're going to be destroyed, but their blood is going to be on our hands. And that's our, that's the focus of our ministry. That's the focus of our job. And in the process of that, we report on different things, right? We, we you know, we tell you about all the different prophecies. And we do act sort of as, as sort of spiritual weathermen giving you the forecast of what we see coming. Yeah, we stand on the walls, we're giving the warnings and all of that. And if questions come up in the process, we answer the questions. But we can't stand, stand there with every single Israelite that get out of line or got an issue with something. And we've learned over the last few days with, through those other videos, but you already knew it, but it came to the forefront. You got a lot of unbelieving Israelites in the background running along beside the prophets, talking shit, telling us how much they don't believe. So guess what? The Lord told us, Hey, we warned you already. We got we got other people to talk to now. We moving on without you, and you stay where you at. You do you be over there unbelieving, and we'll keep doing what we doing over here. We we don't have time to stop and tend to your you know your damn broken wings over there. We don't have time to do it. We're not gonna do it, and we don't want to do it. Verse nineteen says, "Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul." And he said, it would be great if he saw me there. I said, you won't see me there. Repent. And I, the same message. Repent. Because we know Jacob, you know how, how, how our people are. He came back. This is, listen to what he says. So would you like to retract that statement of having to repent for not believing in the 12 tribes chart or I'll die? When did I say that? I never once told him that. Never once. I never said that in the whole thing. But in the grand scheme of things, if you don't believe the message that the try, because look, let me tell you like this. <clears throat> what is the likelihood of an Israelite saying that they don't believe in the 12 tribes sign, but they're doing everything else right? Let's, what's the likelihood of a Jake saying, I don't believe Latinos and Native Americans are our people, but I'm going to go do the work on the highways and hedges with Latinos and Native Americans doing the work also. And I'm going to do every other thing right like it's supposed to do. I'm going to listen to the elders and apostles. But that's just the one thing that I won't do. What's the likelihood of that? <laughs> it's not likely. Jake, going. whenever you see these people that don't believe, they got all other kind of doctrine that they don't. They We saw one today where a lady made a video. She said that in order for a person to be an Israelite, you got to be born out of a black woman womb. She didn't even specify black women, which are Israelites. She just said black women. So that means you could be a black Arab. You could be a black African. A Hamite, you could be a damn, you could be chi a Moabite and be black. And, and if you come out of that womb, you could be the chosen seed. So these people are not, they don't believe. We're not going to waste time. The only reason I'm even going into it because this is another opportunity to show you brothers out there, like we've been telling, because a lot of Israelites are stuck on nationhood. Well, that brother, he is like, yeah, our brother. No, he's not. He's on a whole nother wavelength. <laughs> he don't believe none of what we believe. He, he's just pretending. And like this brother said, he's just trying to, Trying to pick a debate. That's all he's doing. That's all. And he got upset because I guess certain of us, in their opinions, they think certain of us would draw some people to get people to come and watch and pay money. I don't know. But we're not going to do that shit. We're not here to make money. We're not here to help you grow your channel or to be known as some, you know, whatever. We're not here for that. We're only here to do the work the Lord sent us to do. That's it. And we're not going to get on that. Our apostles and elders don't, they don't do it and we don't do it. We don't go on those people's program. To debate shit. You got the 100% truth. You don't need to debate it. The baddest man in the world and whooped everybody ass. He don't need to take no challenges because he done whooped everybody ass already. You know, he don't need to pick some small guy. Nobody knows this guy 5'3". The baddest man in the world is 7 feet. I'm going to beat this 5'3 man ass to prove myself. We don't need to do that. It's already been proven. Look around and look at all these Israelites waking up. Ain't no Israelites waking up because of somebody that's doing debate. And that's just what it is.
That's GS Vegas sit downs. Elder Karate saw they will die if they don't believe. Second edge is 15 and 3. From the good news translation, do not be afraid of those who plot against you or be disturbed by their unbelief. All unbelievers will die because of their unbelief. And, and that's absolutely it. It's even in Revelation. Somebody can put it up. Revelation is it uh 21 and 7 and 8. Unbelievers are right there mentioned with sorcerers and whoremongers and all those other things. Unbelief is a very serious thing. And if you were a believer, you would you if you had problems believing that the Native Americans and Latinos, some of them were our people, you would be a way different about it. You wouldn't be poking your chest out, challenging us, you know, like you know, like you on the level, like the Lord dealing with you, you wouldn't be doing that. You would be careful of what how you talking and what you're saying, but he ain't he gonna just straight up call us false prophets in a minute. I'm going to show it to you. Let's go back to it. This is Rapa Arya, Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see unbelievers right there mentioned among them. And that's where that's what it is. So he says again. So would you like to retract that statement of having to repent for not believing in the 12 tribes chart or I'll die? I never even said that. Jeremiah 23, 21. Now he put scriptures up. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. So here he is now calling us false prophets. See it? But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should not should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings how in the hell if the most title don't put the spirit on you to turn from your evil doings you're not going to do it which we have been preaching to you the right message and you still didn't turn from your evil works dude ain't got a beard and a stick of hair on his face and he can grow hair on his face you can tell he says listen to this that chart is nothing but pushing the love on strange pussy and for our sister strange rod which causes us to continue in transgression before you yeah also pushing a misunderstanding of numbers 118 to justify it so he's saying that the seed going according to the man that's also a lie which is completely garbage man carries the seed our brothers and sisters always welcome to dialogue with those who actually want to build instead of giving the same thing we got in christianity sit down shut up and be taught even if it's lies so he's telling you right there, he don't believe nothing that we teach. So why are you anxious to talk to us, man? I answered him back. Uh, I told him in regards to what he's saying about, I said, he if he don't believe in the 12 tribes sign, he's going to die. I told him, I said, I never said that. I said, repent or die. I answered him back. I said, this truth is only for the elect. We're not here to twist anyone's arm. Like I said, there's nothing to talk about. Just keep it moving, Willie or Leroy, whatever your name is, Romans 11 and 7, what then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. You can't see it because the Lord is not dealing with you. And that's it. That's where it's at. The Lord ain't dealing with him, period. So maybe one day he'll see it, but as for now, he can't see it, and we don't owe him shit. I keep saying that we don't know you, and we don't owe you. You see that little you know, that talking that shit and trying to challenge us. See, see, this is the thing. You're not challenging me. This ministry work is of the Lord. You're challenging the most high. We're the, we're the men that he put out in the forefront, but it's, this is not flesh speaking. This is the Lord speaking with his word. You're challenging him. It ain't it's, it's not offending me to tell me you, you, you know, you this, you that. I can't put myself there and get offended and you know, uh, fuck man, who you talking to? Come fight me, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's stupid. That's stupid. Brother Yashar, why you keep coming back here saying stuff? Did we go over this already? This is guy. G uh, you being double-minded right now. Jim has got some of the men of the Lord, but why when you stop listen to them or don't agree with someone they say they like to bash you i don't know what you're saying man <laughs> then he said gms all the prophets though but which one is it it doesn't matter 
but GMS is the prophets. Like we told you before, bro. Just listen and take notes. Lord willing, the spirit will help you and you can get past whatever it is that's, that, that's bothering you. Because something is bothering you, man. Elder Karadzai said, Karadzai said, niggas are straight genital police. <laughs> very effeminate. Very effeminate, man. And Jake thought he was going to bait me in. You know, you fuck that. I come on there and prove to you. No, no, because he's not going to get it. Even if I was going to program or any brother going to this program, we could stay on there for however long. At the end of it, he ain't going to say, you know what, brother? You open my eyes. I sure see it now. He's not going to do that. It's just like with Esau and the Christians. They want you to sit there and help them. Your Even as we answered all vocab alone, 22 questions, he still ain't going to get it. He ain't going to say, you know, you guys are right. I see it. I see it now. He's not going to get it. That's not what this is about. This is Tawa Paria from the Providence Rhode Island camp. Shout out to Juan, brother. Ecclesiastes 324. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. That deep demon get on Jake, and they, they start trying to get clout. See, right now, Great Millstone have the reputation of being the number one teachers on the planet. What's that commercial? It was a, I don't know if it was a, a direct TV commercial. <laughs> Me and Brother Yuan used to laugh about it all the time. It would come on and, you know, they show the guy on the thing that says, uh, when you wear an eye patch, people think you're tough. And when people think you're tough, they want to challenge, you know, see if you're tough. And then you had a whole gang of dudes chasing this guy to fight him because they realized he was tough. When Bruce Lee was on the scene, people just show up randomly trying to fight the guy because they heard he could whoop ass and they wanted to prove themselves. I could whip his ass. When you're, a go when you're a dope rapper, all types of whack rappers, whenever you go to a show, they want to challenge you to see if you really like that. This is not that. This is the word of the Lord. Either you get it or you don't. The Most High is doing like this. He's grabbing certain ones. He ain't getting all the Israelites. We don't have to stand here and keep going through this with you niggas, man. We're just going to teach the word like the Lord instructed us to do. And after that, we're moving on. Great scriptures. I'm going to get to some of them, brothers. Just a lot. Let me get to the, some of these that I got. <clears throat> I want to go. I want to read this one because Jacob bring this up. Well, brother, the scriptures say this is what the scriptures say. Jeremiah 25. I'm sorry. Proverbs 25, verse 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Jake thing because it's got the word debate in it. This means you're supposed to go and set up a formal debate and sit there. You get 15 minutes to talk. I get 15 minutes. That ain't what the word of the Lord is about. And this does not mean go and have a debate. This talking about when you 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 tell them your cause. What's our cause? Repentance. The Lord sends with prophetic warnings, and that, those are not open for debate. The Lord told, showed brothers, and in the past the prophets, and nowadays these prophets reincarnated. These brothers have seen the visions of the nuclear missiles coming to burn Babylon the Great. And we tell you the missiles are coming, and you say, "Well, I don't believe that. Ain't no missiles in the scriptures." Does that mean they ain't gonna still come and burn this bitch up? No. That just means you don't believe what we told you. That's all. Debate that cause with our neighbor himself does not mean stick that sand there and go back and forth with a guy, even after he can't get it. Because the scriptures already told us after the first and second admonition, that man got to be rejected. And I've done videos already. And then, and then don't forget that that comment that Jake left was on a video going into the twelve tribe sign with proof. So he he already been warned. Let's read some more of these. So lock your brothers. So I just wanted to read that because Jacob, you debate that cause that neighbor. You're supposed to have a debate. But the most high is not going to contradict himself. He sent us with a warning to give unto you. That's what that's our main focus. Giving you the warnings, preparing you for the end of the world and the coming of the Lord. Jim S. Virgin Island Straight Gate, Matthew 12, 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And we're not just some regular dudes that you're talking to on the comment board. That you're talking shit about it. You're calling us false prophets. We were sent here to give you the message, to give you the warnings. And if you don't, hey, you're pushing the Lord's hand away, no problem. We just take it to those that are listening. Because as I keep saying, the gospel is for those, is only for who it's for. And those are the believers, the elect. Excuse me. GMS Taza Doc Lafayette, Ecclesiastes 21.16. The talking of a fool is like a burden in the way, but grace shall be found in the lips of the wise. And it is a burden to talk to niggas. And of course, I, of course, I blocked him after all that. I tried to be nice in the beginning. I just said, hell no. The base are pointless. That's it. He just kept on. You just won't stop. So it is what it is. 
Can't get in touch with me anymore. I ain't talking to him. Jim S. in the truth, Orlando, Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the most high for Israel is that they might be saved. This is our cause right here. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. And the thing is this, the Lord gave us the truth. He didn't give you the truth. He gave us the truth and he gave you the truth. So when we meet each other and my truth don't match your truth. Then you tell me about your truth. And then if I see it, then I'm going to No, that's not how it's going. Our track record shows we telling the truth. Israelites waking up all around the world through the gospel that we're preaching in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Worldwide, GMS has been everywhere. But you want us to listen to what you're saying and you don't even got no salt in the game. You don't got no videos. You ain't been on the highways and hedges. Nobody even ever seen you before. We never heard of you. But we will stop what we're doing and go listen to what you have to say. Oh, man. We already warned you and we already proved our cause already. <clears throat> For they being ignorant of the most high's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the most high. He ought to talk about the brothers and sisters and this and that. You got one soul, dude. You need to be worrying about yourself. Can we get that scripture? Uh, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Let's get that. Because that's what you should be worried about. You should be worried about yourself. You ought to talk about the brothers and sisters who don't agree. Fuck them that don't agree. We're not here for your agreeance. When many of us heard the gospel, we didn't agree. But guess what? The Lord pulled on our soul. He showed us something. He told us something. And we said, you know what? Man, I don't want to stop my career trying to pursue a recording career, but damn, this right here, this is, whew, you know, this is important over here. I can continue trying to make these records, but I might get destroyed. I better pay attention to this. This is the ones the Lord is looking for. He ain't looking for them people that's trying to do, you. well, the Lord, maybe the Lord will wait on me till I become a man and then I live my life and I've come 70 and I'm old, then he'll come. No, that ain't how it's going. It's going to come when the Lord has it come. And if he didn't put the spirit on you to notice when that is, you might get caught up in it. And we ain't trying to get caught up in it. This is uh, Brother Yeshia from Men of Valley, South Carolina, Ecclesiastes 27 and 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. Right. We're not going to be unequally yoked together with you unbelievers. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to come hang out with you. But see. A dangerous precedent was set by these other Israelites who continues to go on platforms with those that are unbelievers. I'm going to name names. Sakari going, uh, what's this dude? Uh, Sardinetta all the time. He should have never been doing that. People go on, Israelites go on Vocab Malone channel. They sit there with him and talk with him and cozy up and meet him for a peaceful debate. Even though this devil, all he's trying to do is tell you that you're not Israelites and take away your heritage and uphold white supremacy. You should have never been doing that shit. The scriptures say we're supposed to avoid them to have different doctrines in us. How much more your own enemy? But they've been doing it. So now Jake got a soft head and they see every opportunity to make money and they think because they're reading out of the scripture. See, we're doing the work of the Lord. We're reading out of the book. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're blurring, you're blurring the, the, the glasses of the elect or trying to. You're trying to muddy the waters. You're bringing gray area and doubt and unbelief and you're bringing unbelievers around us and we don't want to see them. Verse 13, the discourse of fools is irksome and their sport is the wantonness of sin. It's like a sport to a nigga to be an unbeliever. Uh-uh, that ain't true. We from Africa. We Egyptians. We heard all that, man. We heard all that. What's this dude talking about? Why you here, man? So where can one brother, what, where can one go, brother, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord? That's talking about when you perish. What are you talking about? Where you want to go? <laughs> you in the right place. Close your mouth and take notes when you hear these videos or, or not. If you don't want to, then don't. Don't, you You know, we, we do what we're supposed to do. Jake, you people want more. You want more than what, what we're doing for you. You want us to open up soup kitchens and have an after school program and help old ladies, you know, go across the street. We ain't here for that. We're here to bring the message of the Lord. Salvation and repentance for the Israelites judgment for the world and the two-thirds what's hard to understand about it is who can stand against the lord not i his will is going to be done thanks <laughs> thanks <laughs> now shh let's keep going oh boy
Look at this guy. What does it have to do with what we're talking about? You Christians have no order. You lack something, but yet you still here among us. Why are you here with us? It's because you're learning. And if you're learning, that means we're the men of the Lord. That means shh. When I was at a when I was a battle against a demon, the name Jesus, what won the battle? So what can so what can I guess you mean you say to me who have actually been in warfare with demons and overcame with that name? Well, why don't you go find something to fight now then? Why are you here with us? Go find the demons and fight them. In the name of Jesus. Goodbye. Jacob's tripping. And you probably just a white boy and underneath all that. You might, you might be, you might look like a Jake on the outside, but I don't think you you got to eat of my spirit, man. Don't come back around us no more, please. No offense. We just don't have any time for any new friends. This is Jeremiah 25 and 4. It says, in, in reference to what was this guy named? Clayton. Kenan Clayton Jr. Listen, Kenan. Kenan. Jeremiah 25 and 4, and the Lord has sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, and the day is the prophets, turn ye again now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And Go not at the other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, said the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. The Lord sent the prophets. He knew that they were, that the Israelites on the whole was not going to listen. This was back in Jeremiah's time. What wound up happening? We got exiled in all these different captivities, right? So you think Jake going to listen now? No, they're not going to listen overall. But the Lord has a remnant, an elect, and they're going to listen. Those are going to be the ones that believe. And those are the ones who we're searching for. This, those are the ones we're looking for. We ain't looking for all the Israelites. Now, I want to ask, I want to say something. So to all you different black, black people out there, because you don't, you know, you say you Israelite, you black Israelites, because that's, you 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 adhere to that. You like that shit. You like to be called black, which means void of light. But it's all you Israelites that are unbelieving in the 12 tribes sign. Okay, you say the Native Americans and Latinos are not Israelites, right? Here it is. You don't have any works, but you believe you're an Israelite. You ain't preaching the gospel. You ain't teaching. You ain't got no videos, nothing. You just got an opinion and a damn attitude. What about these brothers that have Latinos and Native Americans who are teaching the word of the Lord? And bring it forth fruit, and others are ed being edified and waking up. Are they Israelites? Are they Israelites? Because according to what I'm looking at, according to what the scriptures say, they have the spirit and you don't. And did you also know that Israelites are scattered among every people? You did know that, didn't you? That Israelites are scattered among all the Latin speaking countries in the world, and among every Native American group. Every tribe of Native Americans that, you know, so-called, there are Israelites inside of them, among the Samoans, among all these different peoples, the Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, right? Did you know that? Israelites are scattered among all these different nations. You're going to say they ain't Israelite because they don't, they don't look like this garment look, <laughs> this shirt, even if they got the works. They got a whole camp of people in the Philippines teaching the word, and they don't look nothing like Negroes, nothing like us. They don't even look like Latinos. They just look like straight up Filipinos. Are they Israelites? They teaching the word of the Lord. Can we get Isaiah 59 and 20? You know, the, that, that group of scriptures right there, brothers. 20 and 21, I believe. You'll, you'll know when you get to it. Let's, let's read that. Because this goes into what I'm saying. Those with the spirit of Israelites, are they Israelites? Because you see a Jake, right? This guy right here, he look like a Jake. But this dude right here is, is through. <laughs> he is through. Right, he's just a light skinned you know, when you would describe him as a light skinned Negro, but that dude is through, he's a spiritual tear because I am you, I'm human, I'm Puerto Rican, and I'm born again. Jesus Christ, the Lord our God. No, he's not, and we prove that over and over because if, 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 if the one you, if the Savior was the Almighty Himself, the Almighty, who was running heaven while he was down here, 
Who sent him? Who voice was that that said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Who was that up there saying that? You don't got it, man. Be quiet. That's why the brothers blocked you. And thankfully so. Bugged out. And don't come back around us no more. Please don't. Don't make up a new account and come back on my page saying nothing to me. I don't want to know you. I don't want to know you. I'm going to run like hell if you if you come around me again. I'm just going to keep dodging you because you bugged out. Rapa Arya, Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. That's the Israelites. And unto them that turn from transgression and Jacob saith the Lord. As for my, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, my spirit that is upon thee, Israelites, and my words that I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, from hence, uh, said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So when you see a man preaching and teaching the gospel with power, he can only do that because he's endowed with the spirit of the Lord. That man is an Israelite. But yet you're going to say because he don't look like a damn black onyx stone, he ain't an Israelite. Because he got a different texture hat than you, he ain't an Israelite. That means you are an unbeliever because you don't believe what the word says and we don't have no dealings with you. And this is the folly that these niggas, and I'm calling you niggas, this is the folly that these niggas are running behind. You want me to stand here and believe because this big old dude is gigantic and black. He don't know none of the scriptures. He ain't going to teach. He ain't going to preach. He can't get none of the understanding. But he's an Israelite. But this man over here, because he's yellow or brown, and ain't nobody yellow, but he's brown or light or he got a different taste of hair or green eyes or hazel eyes. He ain't no Israelite because he because of the way he looked, but his spirit is on fire. You want us to stoop to that level of stupidity like you? We're not going to do that. Does it make sense? You got all kind of weirdos, man. All kind of weirdos. This dude, he on here talking about goddamn pork. <laughs> break that down. No, you break it down. You go break it down. And while you do it, get a, get yourself a Baconator from Wendy's and go and scoff it down. That way the Lord can destroy your ass. We done broke that down already. You ain't got nothing over here. Don't even pay him no attention, brother, other than the, the fact that you blocked. I mean, we talking about something important. This nigga talking about Peter Rise, kill and eat. Now you go and eat a skunk sandwich and get back with us. Eat some otter and beaver nuggets and then get back with us. You on a low level, man. Low level. You don't even understand that the Gentiles of the New Testament are Israelite foreigners like us. You don't even get that. And it tells you in Acts chapter 2 and 5, these were devout men, Jews, out of every nation under heaven. You can't even get it. You can't even read. Doesn't make sense. People read right past all the, all the scriptures revealing who the real Israelites are. Or who those Gentiles were. It's all good. Can't be mad at you because you can't get it. You got on spiritual blue blockers. <laughs> the spiritual blue blockers. You can't see. So this one right here is John 3. And I'm going to go to verse. See what I was, what, what I was saying earlier though, brothers? See? When you play back. Can brother Juwan can tell you. Because brother, brother Juwan played. You know, he was a big time basketball player. I'll just leave it at that. Everybody know that. But he would tell me stories about how he was the best ball player in, his, in the area where he lived. And he would be a line of dudes lined up to play him one-on-one, -on -one, thinking they could whip his ass in basketball. He would beat every one of them. This is what niggas, this is what people do. They think that, you know, but this is the spirit and power of your how about you, how shy. It's not, you trying to credit it to us. It ain't us. It's the Lord of the Lord's spirit that's doing this. If you just read this book, it's in, the, it's, let me read you, this, let me give you this new book that we just found out about. Where is it? You can read all about it you can read all about it in this book right here it talks about the spirit of the lord right <laughs> you go there and read that it'll tell you all about what we're doing people too stupid man you think you're gonna be able to stop this truth you ain't gonna be able to stop it even if it ain't, if we ain't here it'll be somebody else breaking breaking all this stuff down you can't beat us in this truth it's just not gonna happen man yeah you got all kind of weird you see this it's just you know what are they doing, man? Let's keep it going. Now, as the apostles said, and they, they keep restating, of course, we're not comedians, but we just can't help. This stuff is easy. You know, when these people come, these scoffers, the stuff that they say, we're men. You can't expect us not to say something. We're going to say something back. We're not dead. 
Let's read these couple of scriptures right here. This is GMS Shar Lachama, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And Jake just won't get past it. We didn't keep this black stuff. You're stuck in there. You've been watching black sportation films, and now you love all things black. And you just can't stand the fact that Israelites are going to look like the other nations. Vocab Malone tried to flip it on your ass. He he argued back and forth, saying that the Savior, Yahweh wasn't a so-called black man. Then, the, then this nigga turned around and used in his article his concerns about the chart being almost all entirely anti-black. That dude is a double-minded devil, man. He revealed himself so bad. The Lord going to fuck him up real good one of these days. We'll see. It's going to, man, everybody's going to line up to get, you know, to see that. This is Rapa Arya, Hosea 7 and 8. Ephraim hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Now, one of the tribes of Israel is Ephraim, but also the leader of the northern kingdom and our whole northern kingdom are like a cake not turned. Ephraim have mixed himself among the people. You see that? Look at this guy. Listen to this. Aren't you the same from Osama bin Laden? <laughs> Aren't you the same weirdos that say Larry Bird is the Hebrew is like? You call us weirdos and you, you got an avatar with Osama bin Laden on it. <laughs> but we're the weirdos. Okay. Go away, man. Go away, kid. You bother me. As soon as y'all see these, you know, I'm, I'm going to let y'all brothers, you know, pay attention to it. You know, you, the moderators got you niggas, man. We got a firewall of moderators around. You can't get to us. Yep. But that's, hey, bro, welcome to this channel. This is what they do. And we just, you just giving us laughs, giving us more ammo. So this is John again, John three. And this is real quick. Going back to the theme where we keep talking about it every night. In these last three videos we did, brothers, we are able to see more and more. The Lord is only dealing with the elect. Most of these Israelites, they're going to continue to lose their damn minds because they can't get it. They can't get the truth and it ain't got nothing to do with us. It's the fact that they're not understanding because they don't have the spirit of the Lord. They don't have the Holy Spirit. John 3 and 12. I'm starting at 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Why? Because they don't have the spirit. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And that's the whole point. They can't get it. They can't get these heavenly things that we bring it out. But that's by design. It ain't got nothing to do with that. The fact that they didn't get a PhD or they didn't finish high school or they didn't go to college. It's got nothing to do with any of that. The part of the country they grew up in, they was in the hood and the barrios, and they didn't get that much education. It has nothing to do with that. It's completely spiritual while some people can get the truth and others can't. And at the end of the day, like the title says, prophetic warnings are not open for debate. You have people that tried that. You, you, you want to try to just try to get us to get bogged down and talking about what you want to talk about, but we can't. We got to talk about what the Lord said to talk about. That's what we're going with this. Always. We're always going to talk about what the Lord told us to talk about. And in the process of that, we've been ordered not to have fellowship with unbelievers. So when you try to, when you say you don't believe, and then you try to offer us to come on your program, we don't got nothing to talk about. Here it is. Second Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That dude, Kenan, whatever his name was, Kenan Clayton. You an unbeliever. I got nothing to say to you. I don't hate you, but I don't got nothing to say to you. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? I don't got nothing to say to Sardinetta. I got nothing to say to end time teachers. I got nothing to say to any of them people with them different platforms. And they don't believe they believe the earth is, is flat or, you know, all the Israelites are black or Esau not the white man. We don't got nothing to say to you. We make the videos to reprove your doctrine. So that maybe you'll turn around and go the right way. But if you don't, then so be it. We're moving on. We don't keep on going on with you a whole year later, still trying to get you. See, brother, if I just show you, you can get it. No, you can't get it. And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord hath the anointed with Belial? Or what part he that believeth with an infidel? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
And what agreement has the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as the Most High has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. We are separate. If you believe in something different than us, we are separate from you. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now I got to get real quick. Romans 16. Let's see what's going on. Jake is ignoring what's in the scriptures for their own feelings. This is a command. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren. Paul said, I beg you, brothers. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. You heard that? They got a different doctrine than you. Avoid them. Don't go on their program. Don't prop them up. Don't help them. Don't talk to them. Don't try to teach them no more if you give them, you know, certain amount of times you, you deal with them. We ain't going to keep on standing there sweating at you day and night trying to get you to get nothing. The Lord told us you got different divisions, um, different doctrine than us. We're to avoid you. We're to avoid you. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. This also means a debate. Why wouldn't go on a debate with you? Now, somebody may say, are you saying it's a car going off or going on a debate with James White or going on a debate with Dr. Ryan Brown? Yeah, Michael Brown, whatever his name was. Yeah, he was going off a little bit by doing it. You know what I mean? But the most I had him do it. Same with whoever else does a debate, but you ain't going to catch us doing that. We know that guy's a self-promoter, okay? Not not trying to come at them, but that's just the truth of the matter. You ain't going to catch us doing no debates. We ain't got time for that shit, man. We ain't trying to promote ourselves, none of that. What I mean, what would have happened if he just told him he wasn't going to do the debate? Nothing would have happened. But what came from it, other than us making a bunch of lessons and proving all Ron Browns or whatever to do, Browns madness, you know, what came from it? Just us made a bunch of videos. Did anybody that believed the Christians say, you know what? I, I like the way the car handled that. I'm going to be an Israelite now. Nope. I mean, somebody could have said that, but we don't see it. It was pointless. But the Lord had it happen. So it is what it is. The scripture says, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. And it tells you why. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Did you just hear that? They don't serve the same God as us. They don't serve the same cause as us. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, but their own belly. So why are we gonna why are we gonna try to yoke up with them? Why are we gonna try to talk to them? Why are we gonna try to you know do a debate or convince them of something? They had their opportunity and they still got more opportunities. This dude, Kenan Clayton, whatever his name is, he still has opportunities to repent because all the videos that we make. They still up. All the videos that we make are still up. And he can listen to them and receive the gospel. We still doing the work and, and tr trying to get these people to repent. But in the meantime, we're not going to take no one on one time to get with you to entertain folks. And this, and you, when you see it, as soon as you say it, that's why the Lord have us say certain stuff. Don't come back around us no more sauce bands. <laughs> sauce bands. The earth is flat though. Okay. See you. <laughs> Uh, he think that meant something to us it didn't mean anything to us like we keep saying all the time you people that believe the earth is flat you one trick ponies you don't even see the fact that with this great awakening and this great ministry that the Lord has going on throughout all the, throughout all the earth where are all your flat earth prophets at we'll wait where's all the flat earth prophets at <laughs> and then bring, bring it out there's a great awakening. In the, there's a movement going on in the earth. A great awakening is occurring. But none of them that we can see are teaching that the earth is flat. This should give you a warning about something there, sauce bands. <laughs> he got bands with sauce on them. He can't, he can't see it, but that's all right. <laughs> Ooh, we... We all get a good laugh tonight, right? Jake is is a trip. He think he gonna be he gonna be in the in the chariots with the rest of them proving it. Like, oh, see, we told you. Look at the earth; it's flat. Look, look how it's shot. We told him. Nope. 
nope, not gonna happen. I mean, now let's let's say for example, we was getting saved into the chairs, and then the Lord showed us that the earth was flat. Okay, great. We see this is the thing. We don't have a problem with like if the earth was really flat, you know, like we would nah, oh, but this ain't the gospel. The earth is flat. No, we don't care. We're trying to get you to understand again the prophetic warnings <laughs> are not open for debate. This ain't about, you know, we trying to big ourselves. We right. You know, we say we got a hundred percent truth. That is glory to you, how shy, not to us. We just happen to be the ones that have it. That's all. Jake hear things the wrong way. I think a lot of people. Purposely come against GMS because you don't like this. Nobody to say that they got the complete truth. And that's the reason why you go against it. You might even believe what we say. Nah, fuck that. Don't nobody got the whole truth. Nah, I'm going to go against you niggas. But we are not the ones that possess it. Yahweh Shah gave it to us. The Holy Spirit has a complete truth and he got men to teach it. That's all we've been saying. For they that assert serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And you see people saying all the time, I love everybody. I don't love everybody. Any person say that, don't trust them worth a fuck. If they say they love everybody, don't believe. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. I don't trust nobody say they love everybody. Shit, I don't love crack dealers, pimps and hoes, bitches and hoes. I don't love them. I don't love KKK members and uh, nationalists, white nationalists. I don't love them. Fuck them. I don't love slave masters. Stupid ass. See here, brothers. I'm trying to find the scripture. Is it 2 John 1? Jake tried to, people love to try to be over righteous. It tells some shit like that. I love everybody. You an idiot. People that work trying to steal your lunch out of the fridge and you love everybody. Trying to take your heritage from you and, and make you go back to being Negroes and black people. But you love everybody. This is 2 John 1 and 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of the anointed hath not the most high. He that abideth in the doctrine of the anointed, he hath both the father and the son. And in the, in the doctrine of the anointed, people are going to go into slavery. People are going to be ruled over. They're going to be working. All kind of things. He that leads into captivity, going into captivity. If you ain't, if you ain't into that, you ain't with us. In the, in, the, in the Savior's doctrine, Israel is scattered to the four corners of the earth. Right? He said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Israelites will come looking like, they're going to come looking like all nations. If you got a problem with that, you ain't with us. Period. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. Now, I know the scripture didn't say that, but all these things are contained in the scriptures. People going into slavery, nuclear missiles, right? The oppressors being oppressed, the slaves being on top, all those things. The plowman overtaking the reaper. And if you can't get with that, you ain't with us. The, the, the most high hate Edomites. If you got a problem with that, you ain't with us and you ain't with the truth. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. It's just as if you're one of them, your own self. And when you deal with people, you go on their platforms, and you big them up, and you, you know, here it is, you know, that they don't even believe in the Hebrew Israelite, what we teach, but you go on their platform and going back and forth with them and being friends. No, man, that's the wrong thing to do. But at the end of the day, you got to live your lot out, and we're going we're gonna to just do what we're doing. We can't. We ain't worried about it. GMS in his likeness, Ecclesiastes 7, 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldst thou destroy thyself? That over righteousness get a lot of jakes. You be so busy hollering about the laws, 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 laws. Then you look around, your damn head is super lined up. Super line. We got a new tattoo in Hebrew letters on your arm. Wait a minute. Something is not right here. It's all good. What 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 what, what is it, man? Well, look at this. <laughs> man, I tell you, boy. We're gonna just read a few more. We're gonna shut it down. Um yeah, brothers got excellent scriptures. Hate is all in the Bible. 
right? That's right. And this is and this is the point. Moon is round, the sun is round. Why do earth need to be flat? Jake just don't get it. The most high is so complex. He's way more complex than just making a 2D flat ass earth with no, you know, no depth to it. No, you know what I mean? Like it's uh oh boy. I'm going to do it. If any brother didn't do it already, just hold on. <laughs> I think somebody beat me to it. Yeah, I don't know. All right, continuing on. So the theme that we've been, been dealing with for the most part is prophetic warnings, right? There's no room for debate with prophetic warnings, okay? That's just what it is. Shalom, brother Shaquat. Shalom to you, brother. Put a description, you know, showing these devils. But see, Jake just keep, they doctrine keeps stretching. They'll say the earth is flat. It's just flat. Then they'll say the circle is a flat circle, brother. <laughs> That's what they'll say. But we, I don't want to get bogged, in, bogged down in that flat earth stuff. They just won't leave it alone. But it's all good. They telling you the earth was flat. They be doing. They be sweating, telling you the earth flat, boy. Trying to get you to get it. You know, trying to break it down to you. And I did our live streams on that whole flat earth. It completely shattered all that shit. And guess what happened? After I did it and proved it in the scriptures, niggas still was saying the earth was flat. When people get stuck on those doctrines, you can't get them off of it because it's a spiritual thing. Same as with this, what we talk about It's twelve tribe sign stuff, so called controversy that Jake can't get. You can't get them to stop saying they're going to keep saying it. They're going to keep coming up with other arguments. The reason why they don't believe it. As soon as you deal with the ones they have, they're going to go and, you know, you're going to disappear for a while and they'll pop back up with a whole nother new list of reasons why they don't believe it. And they can just die. This is what the Lord sent us for Ezekiel 3 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. This is what we don't want. We don't want the blood to be on our hands. So we come to give you the warnings. And when you don't, you see the way they're treating the prophets. Just like they were doing the old days. And the wrath of the Lord came on them. Let's get that. Zechariah 7. Zechariah chapter 7 and verse we'll start at verse 9 we'll start at 8 and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah saying thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion as every man to his brother and oppress not the widow nor the fatherless the stranger nor the poor and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart Right, and this is what we do. We don't imagine evil against these people, we tell them out of love, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. This is what Jake is doing. Them arguments coming up with them videos, trying to go back and forth with us, telling challenges to debates, saying we scared all this stuff. You just trying to toss the warnings out of the window. So you refuse to hearken, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, which is extremely hard, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore, for that reason, came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. See that? But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not, Thus the land was desolate after them that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. And this is a, a thing that happened already. But in our time now, Jacob's following that same trail. You're pulling away the shoulder. You're stopping your ears, right? You don't want to hear the words that's coming forth from the Lord because he ain't going to come down here with, you know, himself. He's going to send representatives to do it. And you may say, well, how do we know you the real men? Well, we already outlined how you would know. You'll be able to see that the word is taking effect over all the earth. Look at it. Look at everybody know we Israelites. 
how they found out you think they found out because of the black only it was like kept repeating it and whispering it one to another then it went around the earth and they told two friends they told two friends no that ain't how it happened men came out teaching the word with the 12 tribe sign look at all the damn israelites and woke up you know how they woke up because we was out there teaching the word in the hot sun in the freezing cold in the pouring rain cops flies mosquitoes red cars flat tires go town to town city to city going through all kind of shit toothache still out there teaching wife left still teaching stomach ache still teaching some brothers had to run take the garment off run to the bathroom stomach tore up come right back and go back to teaching and you know maybe that's a bad example but we go through all kind of stuff to teach the word to you and look at the effect it's had on the earth. Now you pop up at the end with your black ass hollering about the twi the 12 tribe sign ain't real. I don't believe it. You late and you goofy. We've been doing this. And you just not showing up with your late ass at the end of the world talking shit. You see the work the Lord doing all over the earth, man. You can't deny it. A lot of great scriptures, brothers. This is Ezekiel 33 and verse verse 8. We, did we read it? No, we didn't read it. He says, When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. We can't waste time trying to do no debates and do all this other stuff. We have to get the warning out. And the warning has went out, but there's still new brothers and sisters waking up all the time. And we have to feed. We have to worry about that flock. We were teaching the believers. We ain't got time to go into a forum with unbelievers to try to get them to believe, even though we know they're not going to. The most High told Ezekiel, they will not listen to you because they won't listen to me. I may have to go there real quick. Uh, not... It's Ezekiel 2 or Ezekiel 3. Let's see here, brothers. Oh, in hard language. It's Ezekiel 3. It says, let's go right to it. Um, Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel and speak my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. They ain't going to listen to you because they won't even listen to me. Why, Lord? For the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their forehead. So, yeah, we stubborn and we ain't going to stop teaching the word because you don't get it. We're going to just keep going on like you ain't even standing there. You're going to keep trying to come up to us and ask us questions and try to trap us. And we're going to just keep blocking your ass off the comment board. You're going to keep trying to come back, make up new accounts. It ain't going to matter to us because we're not here for that. We're not here for that. We're not here for your love, your likes, your views, your endorsements. We ain't here for that shit. We just want to tell the truth. The Lord sent us to tell. And that's it. Then we go back to go back to our normal, you know, to our boring lives until the Lord come and deliver us. Go back to our own personal hells or whatever trials and tribulations we're dealing with until that faithful day when the Lord come get us and burn you up. Verse 9. Nevertheless, Ezekiel 33 and 9. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou has delivered thy soul. That's the point. We want to be we want to be delivered ourselves. Let's go down to verse 30. Ezekiel 33 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. They say the Israelites and they hear thy words. They know about what we're saying, but they will not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. And have you ever noticed or have you noticed that while these Israelites are telling us that they don't believe in the 12 tribe sign, they just can't stop watching us. 
They watch all our videos. They come here, they sit with us. They want to ask more questions. They prove this, break this down. You know why they're doing that? Because they don't got no profits. You know why the flat earth people keep coming back around us? Because they don't have any profits. That should tell them that we're the men of the Lord and that they're not. But that you think they're going to get it? It's, they're not going to get it. The all black Israelites need validation from us. The the flat earth Israelites need validation from us. That's why we always running into them. Notice that we never go. On, I never click on a, a video of Israelites who say that all the 12, 12 tribes are black. Unless we're going to go there just to see what they're saying so we can attack doctrine. You know, like when a brother sent out a link to a video, then we go, you know, I don't even want to hardly want to do that. There's nothing to learn. They have no edificational value. None whatsoever. But yet we always find them on our comment boards. Always. They'll make up accounts to come back and challenge us even more. Why are you doing that? You say we don't got the truth. I don't show up on Islam. Tell you, you don't have the truth, Muhammad. I'm going to keep coming back every day to tell you you don't got the truth. No, we never even go over there. We ignoring them because they don't have it. See? So that shows you something. But they're doing exactly what the scripture is saying. They say, let's go see what the word of the Lord is. I don't care what they say. I ain't going to do what they tell me to do, but I'm going to go listen. It's entertaining. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on the instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. When you start seeing all the things we've been telling you about, and we do see some of them already. This Mark of the Beast, this World War Three, You know, Jacob, Jacob's trouble is going to be a trip. You see now why the Lord got to bring it? You see why the Lord going to bring Jacob's trouble? He's going to get busy. The rebellious women, you proud Israelites. You people that deny the name, the name of the Lord, that come against the prophets, all that stuff, the Lord going to get you back for that shit. And we don't even want you. We, If we had our way, you would repent and you wouldn't have to feel that fury from the Lord. But you get, you know what? They're going to still do it. And the Lord going to still do what he's going to do. And we can't even get you out of it. Even if we want you to be saved, we can't make you be saved. Kenan. We can't make you be saved, Kenan. I'm going to read this and we're going to start trying to wrap it up. This is Ezekiel 18 and 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. This is for the Israelites. This ain't for everybody. This is particularly, specifically for Israelites. Wicked among our people, if they repent or if they don't, it ain't going to be. We're all one person. You got one soul to worry about. You can't be punished for what your family did. You can't be punished. You know, the most high is not going to do it that way this time. He put us under the curses for what we and our fathers have done in the past. You had Israelites that followed Yahweh Shai, but we all had to suffer because of all the rest of the unbelief. But in, in this time, the Lord is going to, all those that repented, he's going to save them. Let's get it real quick. Revelation 22. And 10 we'll come right back revelation 22 and 10 and he saith unto me seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand he that is unjust let him be unjust still and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still we ain't gonna all pay as a nation anymore and he that is holy let him be holy still and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be so those of us that's doing the right thing, we have a different reward than those who are not doing the right thing, than those that are not chosen, those that have not repented. They have a different reward than us. We ain't all lumped in together. That's what makes it so great. Even, you know, added to all the rest of the great things, that's what makes it so great. And all we got to simply do is when people do this shit that Kenan did, we just ignore the shit out of them. I went, I tried to see where his, you know, where his uh spiritual thermometer, I want to see what his temperature was spiritually. And I found out ice cold and he threw. So it goes on. It says, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that, which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. How's he going to do that? He ain't going to, he going to do it to the best of his ability. See it? The best of his ability, all his transgressions. He's going to do it by the way of the Holy spirit, by the way, not in his own power. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. 
in his righteousness that he had done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord power, and not that he should return from his ways and live? And let's also mention, we got to qualify this. Those that are saved are going to be saved by grace anyway, not by your keeping how many commandments you kept, because we all break them. Being in Babylon the Great and being in sinful flesh. But this is a reference point that we're showing you here. The Lord has a, not just everybody lumped in together. You got the elect and you have those that are not the chosen, not the elect. <clears throat> Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord power, and not that he should return from his ways and live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, if you fall out of the truth in our time now, and committeth iniquity, you go back to sin, living in sin, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he had trespassed and in his sin that he had sinned. And them shall he die. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, are not your ways unequal. You're the ones that's unequal. The way of the Lord is perfect. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he had done, shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he had committed, and do it that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. The Lord is looking at your intent. You turn away from your wickedness and you try to do the right thing. The Lord is going to honor that. You turn away from your righteousness and went back into the world and started back being a damn demon. The Lord is going to honor that with another reward, which is destruction. It tells you why. Because he considereth, he thought about what he was doing wrong. And turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. These are the ones that we're calling. We're calling Jacob to consider your transgression. What is that? The prophetic warnings are not up for debate. Consider your ways. Right here, Haggai 1 and 5. Start at four. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Is it time for you to lay back like a fat rat talking about all the money you got and all this and all of that while the house of the Lord lies waste? Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Now, again, we know that these things, you know, have been uh, fulfilled over time and in time, but it's the same. We can still read them for examples now. Same thing going in, going on. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Are you not dealing with that now? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. The Lord wants us to consider our ways. This is why we preach and teach. For Jacob to consider their ways and turn back. Ezekiel 18 28 because he considereth and he turns away from all his transgressions that he hath committed he shall surely live he shall not die yet said the house of Israel the way of the Lord is not equal O house of Israel are not your my ways equal are not your ways unequal therefore I will judge you O house of Israel every one according to his ways said the Lord power repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity should not be your ruin cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit you got to be a new creation right you got to uh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind you can't stay in the same old way you was you have to exhibit wholesale change by way of the holy spirit and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will you die o house of israel for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, said the Lord power. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. You got to turn around. Now, let's see if we can, let's see what Ezekiel says in the Good News Translation. I'm going to try to read it here. Just want to see the way it's worded. And I'll share with y'all. Um, Good News Translation. Ezekiel 18. 
We're going to go to verse 20. But before I do it, <clears throat> I will read. So my computer get right here. From the comment board. First, Jimmy's spiritual arc. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. This is dire straits, dire warnings going out. Prophetic warnings constantly about the destruction that's coming, about the Jacob's trouble that's going to be on our people, the judgment of the Lord coming on the earth. No time to keep arguing back and forth about stuff you don't believe. You're an unbeliever. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And when the Lord sent out prophets, you have to go and listen to them. That's the mouthpiece of the Lord right there. You go against them, you're against the Most High. Excuse me. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, but he will abundantly pardon. We're trying to get you a pardon here. Jim S. in the truth, Orlando, Matthew 9, 37. Thus saith, thus saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And while we're preaching the word, we're also looking for those that are going to come into the work, into the ministry and do the work of the Lord. We ain't going to be wasting no bunch of time on no, no, uh, no fruitless trees. Remember, Yahweh Shai cursed the fig tree that bear no fruit. See? This is also Rapa Arya, Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Same brother, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. We read in Ezekiel, make you a new heart and you a new spirit, right? He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's right. And how shall I say that in, in Revelation? Behold, I make all things new. Now Ezekiel 18 and 20 from the Good News Translation. Let me get myself together. It says, it is one. It is the one who sins who will die. A son is not to suffer because of his father's sins, nor a father because of the sins of his son. Good people will be rewarded for doing good and evil people will suffer for the evil they do. Now, remember, these translations are crafted after the Christian understanding. Of course, they'll mention hell from time to time. You're going to burn in hell. That doesn't mean these translations don't overpower what we already read in the, K in the KJV. We're just doing it for a more plain, you know, sometimes they give you pearls here and there, but it ain't always on point. All right, because it ain't saying about evil people. It's talking about Israelites. Which those people that spoke spoken of are Israelites, the wicked. That was wicked Israelites were speaking of. Right here in verse 21. If someone evil stops sinning and keeps my ways, if he does what is right and good, he will not die. He will certainly live. All his sins will be forgiven and he will live because he did what is right. Do you think I enjoy seeing evil people die? See how they're trying to universalize shit? But we see right past it. Ask the sovereign Lord. No, I would rather see them repent and live. But if a righteous person stops doing good and starts doing all the evil, disgusting things that evil people do, will he go on living? No, none of the good he did will be remembered. He will die because of his unfaithfulness and his sins. But you say what the Lord does isn't right. Listen to me, you Israelites. Do you think my way of doing things isn't right? It is your way that isn't right. When a righteous person stops doing good and starts doing evil and then dies, he dies because of the evil he has done. When someone evil stops sinning and does what is right and good, he saves his life. He realizes what he is doing and stops sinning. So he will certainly not die, but go on living. And you Israelites say what the Lord does isn't right. You think my way isn't right, do you? It is your way that isn't right. Now, I, the sovereign Lord, am telling you, Israelites, that I will judge each of you by what you have done. That I like. Turn away from all the evil you are doing and don't let your sin destroy you. Give up all the evil you have been doing and get yourselves new minds and hearts. Why do you Israelites want to die? 
I do not want to see. They switched it back. They, everything evil they say is like, but then they switch it back to everybody else. I do not want anyone to die, says the sovereign Lord. <laughs> Turn away from your sins and live. Man, it, it, it you know make you think of Christianity, man. It's, it's all right though. But see, that's that's another form of captivity. We stuck here, man. When we we have to use what we got at our disposal. But we can, you know, the most high gave us these uh these uh you know these glasses these goggles to be able to see through the darkness kids diary my question is being a newlywed married couple and being in perilous times are we not supposed to start a family have children with everything going on thank you um it's not an ideal time to do it but if you do it it ain't like you commit some grievous sin against the lord because the most High did put man and woman here to be together and it did say be fruitful and multiply. You just have to consider what times you're coming into. But it is what it is. You're going to have, but we believe, I mean, the scriptures don't say it definitively, but we know among the believers that are delivered, a number of multitude, you're going to have newborn babies. You're going to have husbands and wives, old people. You're going to have the whole realm. So it's not, it's not a big deal. You know, the apostle Paul said, let's see. Alone. we're gonna shut it down after i just bring this scripture up and reread it i'm gonna hit the comment board um Okay, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good one that the brother put up too. See, we all are um most high is guiding our paths. So the things that we do, the most high God is doing them. Right? This is uh Kazak Banya Howard of Proverbs 2024. 20, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? See, so you newlyweds, you didn't get married, and the Lord didn't want you to get married. You know, you didn't meet somebody and have a family. The most high didn't want you to do that. Oh, that brings in mind another great scripture. Um, Lamentations 3. One of my favorites. It says, Lamentations 337. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not? None of us can do anything that we got planned. The Lord is the one that set us on that course. You see? And we do believe there'll be newborn children, like I said, to get delivered or babies, children that are small. You may have even toddlers. You might have a seven year old that remember, you know, being in Babylon, the great telling the other children that's born in the kingdom how it was on this side. They have the pleasure of being born, you know, in the kingdom or um, being already alive and get delivered and then be able to tell the other other kids in the kingdom of heaven what it was like when we were slaves. We were still in captivity. Now we kings and rulers and priests. That'll be neat. That's going to be neat. You know what I mean? So we'll see. These people are crazy as hell, man. Goodbye. This is, uh, and I'm going to read what the elder brother got up to. Elder, uh, elder from Chicago. I just want to read real quick. The Apostle Paul said this, 1 Corinthians 7 and 27 are thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loosed are thou loose from a wife seek not the wife if you marry hey deal with it if you're not married don't be trying to you know don't try to um make yourself have you know trouble in the flesh i think the brother put this up i'll go ahead and read it since he got it jim s chicago saint benji First Corinthians 7 29, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, which means what? A man that's in the truth and you married, you can't put all your focus and your emphasis on your family at home. Your number one responsibility is teaching the truth. That comes before everything. You got to take that with a grain of salt. It don't mean if your son break his ankle, 
instead of going to the hospital, you can go to camp and ain't nobody, you know, go see about them. That don't mean that. You got to use balance, right? So lock it. The brother had verse 28. But if, but, but, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. If a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you, right? You're going to have problems. A man that's single in the truth is better off. If he's, you know, doing what he's doing, don't complicate. Don't overcomplicate your situation. But then again, the, the, the scripture said, but if you if you burn, it's better to marry than to burn, meaning what? It's better to, you know, get you some satisfaction other than walk around all the time. You can't even teach at camp. Your garment's sticking out. <laughs> your garment's sticking out of the front because you keep, you know what I mean? You got to read between the lines. I ain't going to go all into that. And there's another one, too. Um, just one more. You know, being in the truth, you got to learn how to roll with the punches. Whatever's on your plate, you got to deal with it the best you can. This is Philippians 4 and 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. Whatever the Lord got you, where he got you at, you got to be happy with it. If he wants you to have more, he'll give you more. I got to read that again. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know how to, you know, be being on the low, be down and out. But I also know how to be on, when, when the Lord hit me off with something great. I know how to deal with that. I know how both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Hamashiach, which strengthened me. See, and you got to be like that. And I mean, that's what brothers do. Like the old saying goes, you got to stick and move. There's been times where when I first came into the truth, I ain't have no wife. Right. There'd be times when you single, you teaching the word. You ain't going to meet no Israelite women as a man. You might meet hood boogers. And you just kind of deal with it for what you need. And then when the time comes, you step off and you teach the word. You're doing what you're doing. Then before you know it, you look up. The most high drop something nice in your lap. And you're like, you, okay, I'm going to deal with this. And you do that for a while. You think it's going to be forever. Then it don't be forever. Then you're like, damn, now I'm back to this. And you just deal with that. And then as the Lord give you something else, you enjoy what he gave you until you can't. Right? You just keep going that way. That's just how you're going to do it. You don't go and when the Lord give you something good, then he take it. Oh, I ain't serving them all. How I loved her. You don't do all that. You got to see the bigger picture. The Lord is doing something. He's teaching you something, giving you experience. And that's what you got to be with it. Whenever you, yeah, brother said it, households will be saved. But that don't mean everyone. You got some people that got a whole family in the truth. And ain't none of them probably right. Who knows? You're going to have exceptions to every rule. The Lord's going to give complete. He's going to give a lot of mercy. We're going to all need a hell of a lot of mercy to be delivered out of this place. Jim at Chicago, St. Benji, Acts 11 and 14. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? Households will be saved. You know? Hey, no sweat. No sweat. We try to be try to be nice, but sometimes you can't be nice to Jake. As you found out with our friend, Kenan. He just was completely doing too much. So that's it, brothers. We're going to leave it off right there. You know, Lord willing, it was edifying. You got something out of it. We're learning more and more. The most high has shown us just how how rich these damn two thirds are, man. Damn it. I was going to show a dude comment, but I ain't going to show it now. Let me see. I may bring it back up just to close it out. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we ain't going to be doing no debates. <clears throat> so anybody that watch this, just understand and know. And we've already said that. It don't matter how big your platform is or how small it is. We're not going to debate. Because that's not what the Lord sent us to do. He sent us to preach the gospel. Our mission is way more important and focused 
than to go back and forth with niggas. And even if you, whoever you are, let's say you the you are you are one of the best Israelites, and you do you ain't even a nigga. We still ain't gonna debate with you. Either you can get with what we teaching, or we just and that's it. That's the only offer: repentance or death. So again, from Kenan Clayton, yeah, Kenan Clayton Jr. Come chop it up with the Wooly Bullies. Reloaded tonight, nine Eastern, eight Central, and share why you believe as a nation. By what you believe we as a nation should subscribe to the Twelve Tribes charts. We've already done it through all the teaching we've been doing. I said, hell no, debates are pointless. Either repent or die. And then he went on, you know, talking this shit. Isn't a debate? It isn't a debate, but a dialogue in the scriptures. To say someone will die due to not believing Hispanic and natives are the same people as Negroes, which I never said that. A case like that is something to show your brothers and sisters who don't subscribe to that how the Most High says they'll die for not accepting them as our people. No, nope. they have Mo they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. That's what you strongly believe. Stand on it. The invite stands as our people always welcome to come dialogue. If you do decide to come, also, let's see it blow it up a little bit. He says, also, if, if you do decide to come, also be prepared to show how their ancient customs and cultures line up with the laws, statutes, and commandments more than those on the continent who has that proof showing their tribes like Ephraim, Dan, Gad, and many others look forward to see you there, which that is a debate. You just don't... He, you know, I said there's nothing to talk about. And we read Ezekiel 317, 318, 319. And I said, You won't see me there. Repent. Same message. Keep on trying to bait me. He comes back. So would you like to retract that statement of having to repent for not believing in the 12 tribes chart or I'll die? Which I never said. Then you try to use Jeremiah 23 through 23 and 21 through 22. And he says here, that chart is nothing but pushing the love on strange pussy, which that's completely not true. And for our sister's strange ride, which is completely not true, which causes us to continue in transgression before you. Yeah, yeah. Also pushing a mis misunderstanding of Numbers 118 to justify it. There's only one way that scripture can be broken down. The seed, our families are reckoned by the seed of the father. That's it. He says, our brothers and sisters always welcome to dialogue with those who actually want to build instead of giving the same thing we got in Christianity. Sit down, shut up, and be taught, If even if it's lies. I told the dude, I never said that. I said, repent or die. Then I also said further than that, before I blocked him, this truth is only for the elect. We're not here to twist anyone's arm. Like I said, there's nothing to talk about. Just keep it moving, Willie or Leroy, whatever your name is. Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded. You can't see it because the Lord is not dealing with you. And to all the people around the world who relish in licking your chops at the opportunity to get the Hebrew Israelites in your show so you can try to show them what you know, it ain't going to happen. You ain't going to get no GMS on your show because we got the 100% true. You need us. We don't need you. That's it. You need the word of the Lord that we bring. Let me say it that way. We don't We don't need to come on your program to validate ourselves nor you. The Lord is going to validate in time who his men are. And if you, you that, hey, simple as that. So that's it, brothers. To water everybody for uh, joining in. All right. The elder, the elder brother said, debate for what? We teach these things all the time. Watch the video. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Watch the videos. And, and you can go on this page. And I, like I said, he came on the comment board of a video where he had just taught. We I mean, answered 22 questions from Vocab Malone about the 12 tribes chart, all these objections that people have, which many of them was from the all black Israelites. We answered everything. And then we did a second video dealing with the unbelief among different Israelites about the 12 tribes chart. What, what more do we need to say? That's it, brother. So, again, don't let these people mess with your understanding. Don't let them get you to doubt. 
the Lord is doing the separating. You got the elect and you got all the rest of them. Just be worried about yourself. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. I'm going to read this one. This is uh, Jim at Chicago St. Benji, Mark 122. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. That's right. And he said, we got the truth. Ain't no debate. That's it. We end on that brother's word. All right. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the Holy Lick. Kenan Clayton, you better repent, man. All right. Shalom.